everyone, Dave DeBoe here with another episode of the Property Profits Real Estate Podcast. Today, zooming in from all the way from beautiful Utah, we've got Chris Miles. How are you doing today, Chris? Fantastic, Dave. That's good. So folks, Chris is an interesting fellow. He is the first and only financial planner that I am interviewing on the show. Usually this is all about real estate and real estate investors. Chris caught my eye because he calls himself the anti-financial advisor, but he is actually a financial advisor in a sense. So I really like his concept about, you know what, you don't have to wait 30 or 40 years before you can start seeing the fruits of your investing labors. He's, he's really focused on, hey, let's create cash flow. Let's do this sooner rather than later. And let's help you escape the rat race and, and live whatever financial life it is that you want to live right away. Am I on the right track there, Chris? 100%. Yep. Awesome. Very good. So Chris, why don't we just kind of dive in there? Tell me a little bit about your, why, why you, you like this label, the anti-financial advisor. Cause I had to repent, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, almost 20 years ago, I actually, uh, I, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So uh, I was looking for something to do and I didn't realize that they take, you know, anybody off the street to be a financial advisor, right? As long as you can pass a couple of tests, they're like, you're awesome. Um, so I actually started being a financial advisor almost 20 years ago. The mainstream stuff, the person that says, pay off all your debt, save everything, spend nothing, uh, save it forever in crappy mutual funds. And hopefully someday, if you're lucky, you might be, you know, might have some kind of retirement, right? I mean, that's the basic message, you know, of every financial advisor. Well, just to give you a heads up, Chris, I actually okay. looked at getting into the business, business myself almost 20 years ago, mm -hmm. switching careers. I went, took all the tests, passed the test, was learning about, and my big brother had been a financial planner for like 23 years, so he'd been in the business oh, a long wow. time. And I, I, I was looking at this, and I was looking at mutual funds and really kind of learning about that. And up here in Canada, it's even worse than the States. Oh, yeah. We've got the, the highest, from what I understand, the highest you know, expense charges of any civilized country kind of thing. So Canadians make even less money than our American counterparts on, on mutual funds. I thought there's no way in hell I'd buy one of these things. Why do I want to try and schlep these things to people? So uh, I switch courses, but anyhow, I digress. So you, you, you're repenting from having done that for a while. Tell, tell us. Yeah. See, you were just smarter than I was. It took me four years to figure it out. Right. <laughs> You know, and, and, and it, was, it was interesting because it wasn't, I mean, I started to see some problems because like you, I started really looking at the reality, right? I like to look at evidence. And as I started to see it, as time went on, I realized even people I was inheriting as clients from decades of financial advice, they were much better off than the rest of Americans. You know, like they had accounts and such, but I mean, half of them wanted their previous advisors to go to jail because of Y2K, because that's when I came in the business was right after everything crashed and tanked from 2000 to 2002, right? So they all wanted those guys in jail. They hated financial advisors, uh, you know, and, and I started looking at the numbers. And I realized, wait, if I look at real returns of the market, not the average return, right? Because average returns are deceiving because if you lose 50% in the fund, you would think, and even as advisors, we got quizzed on this and we all got it wrong. Like that someone asked us, they said, if you lose 50% on a fund, so you go from $10,000, let's say down to $5,000, you lost 50%. And then the person asked us, the trainer asked us, now what do you need to get back to 10,000? And we all said 50%, right? 100%. But that's not, yeah, you're shaking your head because you know that's not true because you, yeah. you can do simple math. You're like, no, 50% only gets you to 7,500. You haven't got back to breaking even. You need 100% because if you lose half, you got to now double. So you go from negative 50 to positive 100. He says, you do the average on that over two years, you know, 100 minus 50 is 50 divided by two years, 25% a year. And, uh, and it was a big epiphany. This is like 2004 when, I, when we really brought this up and I started to really dig deeper and I realized like, wait a minute, the market hasn't averaged 10 or 12, well, it's averaged 10 or 12%, but it hasn't yielded 10 or 12%. It's really more yielded closer to seven to 8%. And then you take out fees, then you're lucky to get maybe 6%, right? Or and, uh, a four. <laughs> or four if you're in Canadian. Yeah. And then if you have inflation, then you're like, I'm not making anything, you know? So that was a big epiphany. And but again, my pocketbook was tied to it. I didn't want to separate from it. But there was a guy, he was a friend of mine that I actually trained in that business that left to do real estate investing, right? And this is the end of 2005, beginning of 2006. And uh, 
we started in this debate about what's better, stocks or real estate, you know? And he finally just asked me, he said, Chris, how many of your clients are financially free? And I said, like where you're not worrying about money, not just retired, but not worrying about money. And I said, well, none, because they watch stupid news programs like CNN and, and nobody can live in faith or, you know, they'll all be in fear if you watch any kind of those news programs. So I'm like, none, they're all financially in bondage to some level. He's like, well, there's, you know, good job, Chris. There's check mark number one you strike, struck out on. Well, how about this? How many of you guys as financial advisors are financially free, not off the commissions, mm -hmm. but actually off of doing the investments you've been recommending? And I thought about it. I was like, well, none. He says, there's your problem. Like these guys have been doing it since the late 70s and they still can't retire. So what makes you think your clients will be able to retire? And it was like a shot between the eyes. And uh, I was like, crap, what do I do? And I remember he told me to get a book by Kiyosaki called Who Took My Money? It's a lesser known rich dad book, right? That rips into why mutual funds stink. And, uh, and then he had me list this radio program that real estate investors were doing. And I'll tell you, it blew my mind open because, and this is where I became the anti financial advisor, right? I vowed never to do financial planning after this. I quit March, 2006. I said, I'll just teach ballroom dancing and I'll be a mortgage broker. Like that was going to be my path. But people want to keep asking me questions. And I was actually able to retire myself because I realized it wasn't about accumulation, right? Which is what every advisor tells you is accumulate, 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 and then live on less than the interest. Mm -hmm. And there's that whole dumb rule about the 4% rule, which they say has been proven, but it was proven based on old interest rates. They haven't updated it to where it's really probably more like three, if you're lucky. So if you want to live on a $100,000 a year lifestyle, to live on 3%, you got to have 3.33 million saved up. But if you start putting in real numbers, like if you put in the market, say you only earn six or 7% in the, in the mutual funds, you put in what you're saving, you'll find out it's really hard to get to 3.33 million unless you're saving a nice chunk of change. Yeah. Oh, and that's if, that's if you retire today. You throw in inflation, now that 3.33 has to become like 10 million, right? And then it's like impossible and it's depressing. And that's why I had to leave because I couldn't be in integrity and teach that stuff anymore. Well, when I realized this, it wasn't about accumulation. It was about cash flow right? It's about what kind of income streams can it provide you? And when I started to focus on that, I started to see what was possible like within real estate is, wait a minute, I can get it like in the United States here, like when I do like turnkey single family homes or duplex and things like that, I go for at least a 10 or 12% cash on cash return, right? I want that, you know, um, and that does include growth, um, you know, tax benefits, and all that other stuff we get here in the, in the US. I mean, in the States, we could pretty much get tax-free income from our real estate, right? Right. Um, which, you know, as we're getting our tax rates good, looking closer to Canada's, right? We, we got to have some tax breaks. Mm -hmm. um, and so as a result, I was like, wait a minute, I can make 25, 30% a year doing this, but most importantly, it's creating cash flow because if I can make 1% a month on my property, I don't need 3.33 or even $10 million down the road. All I have to have is basically a million bucks and I can have a hundred thousand a year or a 10, actually that's 10,000 month lifestyle. That's 120,000. I, but yeah, 800,000 to a million bucks. And I can basically have about a hundred thousand year lifestyle. And that, that epiphany blew my mind to the point where financial planning just seemed like a joke. It, it wasn't planning at all. It was just financial sales. And I realized I was a salesman in a suit and that's the shift that everybody has to have. Everyone's got to get away from the mainstream where billions of dollars of marketing being advertised to you to go and throw money in these cruddy, mediocre, high risk, mutual funds, right? That you have zero control over. And when you have zero control, you have zero freedom. You can't have freedom where there's no control because you can never sleep at night. And that's the thing that, you know, when you talk about real estate and doing these other kinds of, you know, really doing more alternative investments, oh my goodness, it's so much a, an easier world to live in. Well, that, that's awesome. That, that's fantastic, Chris. And I think most of the people watching or listening to this already sold on the idea of real estate. That's why they're listening to a real estate podcast. So yeah. <laughs> what would you, what would be some of the other alternative investments that you recommend people take a look at in addition to real estate investing? You know, honestly, I think real estate is the best place to look. If you're a business owner, I mean, definitely look within your business to see if you can make that more profitable. Cause that's one of the few places that people get stuck in the rat race there too. Right. Um, I, I deal with a lot of business owners as well as high paid professionals, you know, people that are like, doctors, you know, that are just employees, but they make a lot of income. And the, sa and the same trap applies to both is that both of them are in businesses or in jobs where there is no freedom. There is no exit, you know? So 
you know, if you got a business, for example, you want to build it to where it's profitable enough and systematized enough that you could exit out of it, even sell it for a higher multiple than what you're, we'd get paid for it right now if it's just relying upon you. Um, that's one. It's like definitely look at businesses. Franchises is another one. If you don't have a business, could you buy a franchise where maybe you can get some of the tax benefits off of that, right? Where you can get some of those write-offs, especially if you're an employee, you know, I do it. Warning though, there are passive franchises out there, but I would call them semi-passive, right? Because uh, depending on if you're an active investor in real estate, you get this, right? Like, because if you're an active investor in real estate, you really just no own a business. There's no such thing as, as passive income in real estate. No, <laughs> no. I mean, the most passive you might get is if you put money in a syndication, right? Or, you know, turnkey is close, but even I call that semi-passive because you still have to go through the loan process or whatever in the title. Right, you got to check process. up on things. You got to keep an eye on things. Yeah, you got to manage it, right? Yeah, exactly. So, and same thing with the franchise. You might spend, and I actually looked into this last year for myself, you might spend 20 hours a week for a couple months, right? Getting it to the point where you can get down to five or 10 hours a week. But could it create a six-figure income? Yeah, it definitely could. Where you're not in the business, you're working on the business at that point. But there definitely could be some upfront work and a learning curve that's there. Uh, but it's nice because it's a system, right? So it's there. Um, you know, I, I've got a friend, he's a land geek. You know, he talks about flipping land. You know, that's another great thing you could do too, where there's high ROI. Sometimes it's in the ballpark of pretty close to 100% you know, on that ROI there. Um, even, uh, you know, I had one client, he was in Hawaii. He said, Chris, I absolutely despise real estate. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I'm like, not even the, not even like a syndication, not even an apartment deal. Nope. I don't want to deal anything with real estate. It just seems like a headache to me. So we started looking around for him. We found oil, like oil investments, you know, now there's definitely a degree of risk and speculation in there. Um, he was kind of doing it the wrong way at first. He was like, I'm going to buy an individual well. So he bought like three individual wells, which kind of diversifies, but it really doesn't. Right. Uh, so I said, no, let's, I mean, you could do that, but that's a hit or miss. Like a, you could strike out on that stuff. Let's look more like a syndicated type of fund where maybe they got 40 wells inside of that portfolio. You invest there instead. And so that's what he's doing. He's, he's like, I don't want to do anything with real estate, but oil, I'll do that all day long. It's like, great. Well, so, so Chris, that. forgive me. You, you, you say you got out of the business a number of years ago, but mm -hmm. listening to you talk and you talk about clients and advising them. Yeah. Sounds like in a way you still are advising people financially, just doing it in a very, very different way these days. So what, yeah. what, uh, you know, in addition to the passive investing that you do personally, mm -hmm. what do you do for other folks to help get them investing better or help them accomplish their, their financial goals. Yeah, so I'm semi-retired. Every time I try to retire, people want me back out of retirement, right? Because they want boring me. is retirement anyhow. Who the hell wants to retire? To be exactly. Perfect. It's boring. It stinks. And people say, why are why aren't you retire? Like you've never been there. You would understand if you were, you know. But you know, like it's yeah. I mean, I I more part time consult. So uh, I help people met, create a game plan and I connect them, right? So like like I wants to do oil. It's like great. I know a company to do it. I'm not recommending it. I don't ever tell people you should buy this or invest in this, right? I stay away from that line. Um, but I do say, hey, based on your objectives or your, your timelines and stuff, right? Because even in real estate, there's so many variances that you can do. Uh, so you got to figure out, well, which one actually fits what you're trying to accomplish? Because if you're trying to, accomplish, trying to retire in three years or get financially free in three years, we may not want to go into a six-year deal, right? We might want to look something more shorter time frame or something that's more regular cash flow quickly, you know, um, vice versa. If you're looking more for growth, there's other things you do on the growth side, you know, and, and so really just helping them strategize, you know, map a game plan so they can say, great, here's how I can get there quickly and safely to do what we want to do. Nice. So are you, uh, because there's all sorts of different kinds of professional that, that provide financial advice. So the typical financial planner, quote unquote, or financial advisor, doesn't charge directly for their fees, mm -hmm. but they get a nice commission. Right. For shitty mutual funds they sell you. So exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one way. And then there's a financial professionals who are fee based who charge you a fee, mm -hmm. uh, but they don't make any commission. So theoretically, right. they're much more objective about the offer about the different options are re recommending to you. Is that kind of more along the lines of what you do these days? Yeah, I fall closer to the latter, right? Where it's more of just charge a consulting fee to say, hey, we help map out a game plan. Ultimately, you call the shots, but hey, I can help you strategize, connect, you know, bounce ideas off of me. You know, the one thing I just always tell people is, hey, if you ask me, should I invest in this? I'm going to say, 
can't ask me that question. But uh, I will tell you this, if it's bad, I will definitely tell you, because if it looks horrible, I might say, here's the warning signs I see. Here's the pros and cons. Um, but I'm definitely not going to say, cons. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> if you hear a lot of opinions out of me, there's going to be a lot of cons most likely. Right. Um, you know, most like, like when people say, Hey, what do you think about this property? I'm looking at this property right now. What do you think of performa and everything? I'm like, Hey, it looks good. Cool. I don't have any complaints, you know, yeah. and they're like, okay, that's what I need to know. Great. You know, and they, they would charge ahead. So it's so different. You're, you're it's, basically like a, a sounding board for people. You yeah. can kind of point them in the right direction. You've got a lot of, you know, it sounds like you've got a lot of experience yourself these days, especially with, mm -hmm. with passive real estate investing, so you can have an objective set of eyes looking at that. Very, very cool, Chris. Time flies when we're having fun. For sure. Uh, we definitely are having fun, so we'll have to, you know, if you're up for it, do it again sometime in the future, uh, where we can dive a little bit more in depth. But if people want to find out more about Chris, Chris Miles, I, I know you've got a great website, you've got podcasts, you've got all sorts of great training materials out there. What should people do to find out more about you? Yeah, either of those two places. Either one, find my podcast, The Chris Miles Money Show, that's on iTunes or other podcast apps. Um, or two, you can go to my website, moneyripples.com. That's R-I-P-P-L-E-S.com. And uh, there's great blogs, with lots of information on there as well. Fantastic. Chris, has been a lot of fun. Um, I'm, I'm glad you've repented, you found the, <laughs> found, the, found the light, left your wicked financial advisor ways uh, behind you. That's fantastic. And, and uh, sounds like you provide a very, very valuable service because, you know, it just, it, it, for the average person, it is so hard to find somebody who will just mm -hmm. objectively take a look at their situation without a hidden agenda, right? That's right. Or, that's that I think is very, very valuable. It sounds like you've done very well, you know, following your own advice, mm -hmm. listening to your friends, you know, chastising it <laughs> <laughs> way back in the day and saying, Hey, that, that makes sense. So hats off to you yeah. for doing that. And, and I appreciate you sharing some of your insights. Such a pleasure, Dave. I really appreciate it. All right, everybody take care and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Well, hey there, thanks for tuning into the Property Profits Podcast. If you like this episode, that's great. Please go ahead and subscribe on iTunes. Give us a good review. That'd be awesome. I appreciate that. And if you're looking to attract investors and raise capital for your deals, then I'm going to invite you to get a complimentary copy of my newest book right back there. There it is. The Money Partner Formula. You can get a PDF version at InvestorAttractionBook.com. Again, InvestorAttractionBook.com. Take care.